Hello guys, um, for the past month and a half or so I've been um, working on uh, some Federation stuff, ADFS, and I um, just decided to make this small video to um, go through some steps that I found. Um, I've already installed it and set it up and uh, I did I do not have the resource to set up another box right now and I do not want to actually flatten my box that I'm using right now because I have it working for other tests so I would so I'll just go over the steps I would not actually do it alright I'm gonna be jumping through servers because uh, I have some external servers to do internal testing coming through currently I'm on my local server and right now I'm gonna go ahead and jump out to an external server on this server I'm gonna go ahead and open up a private browser in private browser now working with ADFS you want to make sure you're always opening up your browser in in private mode because ADFS works with token and opening it in, in private mode um, actually helps you reset the token faster so for example you open it in, in private mode and you're done doing your testing all you need to do is to close all the in private mode browser and that token is flushed and so now it was in private mode it's easier so I'm gonna go ahead and paste the URL for my uh, my test app so what I did was I created an ADFS on my backend server and I created a, a little test app to um, show me what um, claims I'm getting so right now my um, Reliant Party that I have within my internal server for this URL is pulling all the claims that my ADFS server is giving so if I do enter here ask me for login So I log into my little app here and I authenticate and it goes to my ADFS server and it pulls all the claims I can play with here. So these are all the claims it's getting from my ADFS server that I can use to create an app, to personalize a page, whatever I want to do with it. As long as I have this token, I have this information to do it with. That's what ADFS is all about. It goes in, it basically authenticates the user and pulls in information from that AD and gives it to you so you can do whatever you want to do with it so uh, let me jump back into my internal server and now this is the step-by-step -step guide I found this is the closest thing this is the best reference basically it's, a, it's not spot-on uh, some things I had to improvise because I'm working with a different system it's not always going to be it's not a one plus one is two always you know you have to improvise because this is thus a guide keyword guide so I'm just gonna go through it quickly and uh, let's see what we have here what the what the guide does basically tells you what it does the requirement which nobody reads now the first step here is to download install and configure prerequisite software now it says number one is IIS so basically the server you're going to install your ADFS on needs to have IIS to confirm that you just need to go into the server manager confirm you have the web service IIS role on as so long as you have that you have met that requirement next requirement is to have .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 or old, un, sorry, all newer, sorry. Uh, it doesn't say that here. Well, I'm running, I'm running R2, so this section is not valid. The thing, the thing about R2 is R2 comes with uh, pre-packaged I think 4.51 and 
uh, or 4.51 pack, something like that, which includes all the previous versions. So that is why this is there. Now, um, so but you can check that out if you go into Control Panel, which you all know, Programs, uh, Microsoft, where is it? Here we go. I have this multi-targeting package, and I have also have the 4.5, which basically covers everything. So the, you should see either one of these or your 3.5 there to be good. Next, it says you need to have uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. Now, this one, you do not need to have it on the machine. This section, this one is just to create the application the windows i what's it called windows trying to look for what the definition of with there you go sorry windows identity foundation application that is what you need this uh microsoft visual studio to do to create the app so you don't need to install for uh, for example i do not have it on this server but i do have it on one of my servers which I think it's enough for me for this is where I do all my Visual Studio work if I have to do it. So so I have it. Technically I have it. Now it says to download ADFS 2.0. I've already downloaded that one. And also downloaded the Windows Identity Foundation SDK 3.5 which is this one here. So now that I have met all the prerequisite, I will jump to the next step. The next the next step is just to install it's just to install the ADFS software, nothing else. Just install it next, 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 close. No configuration whatsoever. Well, actually you have to say accept and you have to say foundation server, not a multi another another farm so yeah, you know okay the next step is to create and configure uh, server authentication well sorry server authentication certificate in IIS so now um, this is one of the pr this is one of the section that is actually um, uh, it was actually off for me because what this doesn't tell you, I'm guessing they don't want to confuse people. Um, what this section is telling you is um, you need to have a certificate. I, uh, ADFS only works with um, secure HTTP. So you need to have a certificate for it to work. It needs to be HTTPS. So this section is telling you just well let's just create a bug let's just create one. So but in my testing environment I did not follow that step. Well I followed it but I did not create a self signed because I already have one for my domain. So I go in here, this is the one I used. The key thing in the certificate you, uh, you need to look at the uh the name whatever you're going to configure your ADFS you need to have a certificate for that domain for example my ADFS is configured as sisvs.com so the certificate for sisvs.com needs to be in here in IIS whether it's self-signed or it's externally signed it needs to be in IIS so I have one there so I'm good that's this step if you don't have one you have to create a self sign one just for testing you can do that now the next step here is to configure computer as a standalone federation server so since I've already uh, installed it and I already configured it I'll just go through the configuration section to see So I bring up uh, ADFS 2.0 and let's see, edit federation service properties. 
so now this is what they're talking about for example when you configure it all you need to give it is the the d domain name like this one this service will now configure everything it will configure IIS it will do go through and check and everything now what it does is right now that I have this I have this see this domain is the same as I have for my certificate uh, well, after it does its configuration automatically it does bring in the certificate this is the certificate I have in ADFS it does bring it sorry this is uh, I have in IIS it does bring it over to ADFS to use as uh, for security these other ones are ones it created for its own this one of those internal that it created for its own so we don't need to worry about these ones so that's that section that's this section here see if you notice here see this name this section it says specify the service name verify that the, the service name which is this one so you need to verify that this same this the name you used here is the same one that you used in the certificate that all that matters it does you do not need to create a self-signed one if you already have one it, the name that you have that certificate on needs to be here when you configure your ADFS all right now next section is basically creating an app to and that's all about it this section is all about it. This section is creating the app that you're going to use to pull out your information to see how it works. So it says to install the WIF SDK, which we already did. It's just a basic I accept in the folder. It's pretty basic. Now, after you've installed it, this section here is what you run to basically set it up. What it does is it creates. Um, an add-on on your um, on your Visual Studio that allows you to add the STS reference so when you're creating a Visual Studio app you can create an STS reference that's what that little thing does so next uh, it says to create a pool in your IIS so let's go ahead and look at IIS and see what we have. So go to same IIS, go to the main page, go to application pool. The names you you have to be careful. The names are not um. The names can vary. For example, I have mine as um. Let's go down here. The key thing, is, the key thing in the name is 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 a process model. That's all. It, that's all that matters. I, for example, I have two ADFS pool. I can use any one of them. Um, but let's go ahead and create the with one. So I said add a pool and give it a with sample. And then you hit an OK. And what it wants you to do is you need to go into Advanced Settings. You see, I'm highlighting that. Go to Advanced Settings. And you're looking for Process Model right here. And it wants you to change the lo uh, Load User Profile. This one. You need to change that to True that's all you need for an ADFS pool so that's that section uh, the next section down here is to create an application uh, now like I, like I mentioned um, like I mentioned before I do not have this created on my um, I do not have this uh, create. I do not have Visual Studio installed, so I do not have this here. But what we can do, 
uh, show you a neat trick that is actually missing in here we can go to one of my servers that does have it uh, just I'm trying to get this name off here for CSS da -da -da. go to one of my servers that does have it this is the one they want us to pull out and this is it here so I'm gonna go ahead and open location so this is the this is the application basically for that RP for manage SDS this is the actual code in the back end so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out of it alright I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna come back to my server I'm gonna open up this one test I'm gonna see ADFS you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it out here so it's gonna copy all that information you see it says claims aware and they're gonna put it down in into my local server so what I've done is I've basically uh, jumped this Visual Studio I jump this uh, Visual Studio stuff here and I would show you well I've jumped the first section I still have to uh, do this this section and I'll show you how we do that in in a few seconds here okay now the like I said uh, so we've done this section here and we've moved the app over over there right now one one thing that is missing in this doc uh, I don't know if maybe I missed it but bef before you can set up all this uh, information here you have to make sure the URL to your IIS is set up correctly so I've copied this over here right uh, into my local server it's, it's on the e test e ADFS uh, and this is the name so what I need to do is I need to go into IIS I have a pool this is the pool we're gonna use so I need to go into sites I'm gonna leave it at on the default sites doesn't matter I'm gonna go say you right click I'm gonna go say add an application I'm going to select it. I want it to take from the uh, the WIF pool. I'm going to the application can be anything you want. So I'm going to say V I D E O test, and I'm going to make that go to there, ADFS, and there. Right. I say okay so it's the IDO test so basically right now I have a a link where is it Then browse. I'm trying to get. I normally I do this so that I get the name of it. Uh, let's go. Manage application. Browse it. How come you're not browsing it? Oh, HTTPS. Let's go. There we go. It'll give me an error. That's fine. 
Oh, well, pointing to something else. <laughs> but this is what I basically what I want. The URL. So, now that I have that URL there, I can close this. That section is done. So now I can come to this section. You see, there's a break. After you copy the app, you have to create the IIS endpoint to connect them together. This, this doc or this step-by-step -step guide is actually skipping that section. So. I've created the endpoint. Now I'm going to continue from here down. I've, I removed it out. I've removed it out of Visual Studio. I'm doing it manually. So what I need to do now is to bring out this, right? And um, it says to browse to the configuration file. The configuration file is in here where we put it, and it's the web file. And now this is where the, this is what's currently in the the um, the application, but we need to put in our URL because this is very important for the Reliant Party Trust. So put in our URL, this is it, SISVS video test. Then we hit a next, you see the section, this is what it's going through right now. It says use existing SDS. Uh-huh. I was asking you for the metadata for the ex uh, the existing STN. Now this is very important. You see, what you need to do. He says to put in this, but in my case, uh, I'm gonna go back to my app here. And I'm just I'm looking for a metadata file, uh, which should be somewhere here. And I'll go back there, paste it in, and go next. I'm going to disable the chain validation. I put no inc oh, did I have that? Disable chain validation. I put no encryption. And I go next. It shows me the claims that uh, get in. I go next, and I go finish. So basically, I'm, I've successfully configured the application. Uh, that, that's on the web services side, All right? Now, what I need to do, or if you have somebody hosting your section now, next step here is to create a reliant party for that URL you just um, the IIS URL you just created. So, you're going to uh, IDFS. You're going to trust relationship. Say add a reliant party. Say start. You say enter data manually. The name. I'm going to name it VIDEO test. Next. ADFS 2.0, of course. 
no certificates for encryption and this is what we want, we want to enable passive we want it to be the same, we want the endpoint to be the same as what we have, so we we'll deliver the token back to the site that he got the token from go next the identifier, it's always the, also that's the identifier now, go next you want to permit all Let's go identifier, make sure everything is there. Signature, claims, okay, okay, okay. Notes, okay, okay. You do next and finish. So, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rule. Let me see if I have that rule. I can do something like uh, add rule LDAP claims. Now let's do a pass through, that will be easier. Uh, pass through. I want it to show me the name. Finish. Add another pass through. Again, next, I want you to show me. Email address. There I go. Email. Finish. Does it two are fine for now, and I say apply. OK. So now I have that URL all set up. I'm going to go ahead and jump out to an external box. And keep my fingers crossed. Close all the in private sessions. Open up a new one. Paste in my video test URL. Browse to it. Should prompt me for authentication. Authentication. There we go. Uh, and I've logged in. Goes to ADFS. Hmm. And it comes out with no claims. So it's working. It's working, but uh, no claims. Now, this is something we need to g jump back and fix. So we need to jump back into the server. The problem is here with the Reliant Paddy. Everything is authenticating, but the Reliant Paddy is not giving it any claims. So we'll go back here and look at the claims again this is not working so we remove it this is not working we remove it and let's add a new one let's see transform incoming claims let's see if that works so the name is coming name is going just pass through the values not sure why it didn't work before and go to transform incoming claims yes we need email got us email so that finish now I'll show you what I mean by closing the session for example, if I go here now, I, I can refresh all day. Nothing will work because the token is 
okay the ticket is still there so you need to close the the browser and if there's any other in private browser you need to close that too so I close the in private here and I reopen it again paste my URL authentication again I'm still not getting my uh, name claims. That's weird. So, let's check it again. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go back here, change to local server. So, I open up the claims. Let's just add another one. Let's see. I can do a custom claim, but I want to see. I think let's try the LDAP Active Directory. Yeah, I think this is it. Uh, I must have punched it in wrong. I'm, I must have done the pass through. This should be it. This is basically querying. Display name as name. So we have email address as email, and then what else? Company. Let's see if this works then. Finish. Okay. Go back to this one. See if a refresh works. It's not. So close it. Reopen in private. Paste. And we go. Ha! Huh. Now this is what. So this is give us giving us an ADFS reference number. Now this reference number always correlates to a backend uh, event. So if you're troubleshooting and you get reference number, always come to event viewer. And the ADFS logs are in application and service logs. Open up ADFS, ADFS admin, and you say find. Like up here, let's say How come it's not loaded? One event. Let me only have one event. That can be right. Hmm. From this time, I must have not turned on the login. Not a problem. But I know I know the issue with my claims because as soon as we add those other claims, it stops. So there's a problem. Call it in my claims, which I'm not sure why, but we're going to have to investigate. Well, 
while all that is going on, I will investigate why the claims are not coming. But we can just do a custom claim here and just paste. Uh, I think the code uh, all. Uh, this is the code for the paste all this. We get all the available claims and then we can look through them. So let's see uh, finisher and uh, apply and then say OK. Then the same thing here. Oh, close this one. And copy this out. Oh, we need to close this too. And we need to open this one up. And we need to paste. Go. Voila. So this one will give me all the claims. Um, the reason why I'm not getting the claims is that I think I'm not formatting it right um, because it's querying active, active Directory and I need to put in some uh, Active Directory query on top there. But I'll we can figure it out. But this basically gives you all the claims, all the available claims for my that my AD is giving for that test. You see, this is what we did the test, and that is it's working perfectly. So you can jump back here. So this section is basically what we were having creating the uh, the actual claims. Uh, we created the the rules. This is what we were having problems with, and uh, so that was gone and. Uh, Yeah, this all section is creating the rules, and uh, the rules is what we were having trouble passing through for some reason. We did the pass through once, and they're not coming through. And uh, I'm not sure when I did it before for my other app, it worked fine, but for this one, it's been a little bit stubborn, so I'm not sure why. But basically, that is how you set up the uh, the ADFS. It's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I did it a couple of times. Uh, all in all, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to set it up. It's not that difficult. So as you know, you have an idea of what you want to do with the data because um, the app I created, it just shows you the data. It's an app, well, the app I copied over is just showing you the data. You can format this wherever way you want. Um, yeah, and that's it. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Alright, uh, thank you for spending your time and listening to me. Babbling, babbling, babbling. <laughs>